Hello and welcome to UCF Housing's Returning Resident live stream. We are so excited to have you all here and are looking forward to answering some questions you might have about your options for living here at UCF. My name is Hallie Harriet. I am the Marketing Manager for the Department of Housing and Residence Life. I'm joined today by so many of our valued partners who are all dedicated to helping students find the best housing options. Today, you will be hearing from Dr. Chris McDonald, the Assistant Vice President of Housing, Recreation and Wellness, Childcare and Student Neighborhood Relations, Brittany Deegan with our Off-Campus Partners website, um, Destiny Woods with The Point at Central, Brianna King with Knight Circle, Caitlin Schlicht with Union West, Rick Cologne with Financial Aid. You'll also be hearing from Student Legal Services and Matthew Scott, the Sergeant of Community Partnerships, and finally, Meredith Barner, our Associate Director of UCF Housing Administration with On-Campus Housing. As a reminder, this session will be recorded, so you'll be able to access this entire live stream again on our UCF Housing YouTube channel. To get started, I'm going to pass it on to Chris, who is going to tell you all about student neighborhood relations. Go ahead and take it away, Chris. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, however you're seeing this, whether live or recorded. I'm very excited to be with you here today, and I don't want to take up too much time because we have so many valuable partners to hear from. But I did want to make sure that as people anticipate moving, um, potentially moving off campus uh, and what it means uh, to get continued support while off campus to highlight that we do have an office and we do have some dedicated staff working with student neighborhood relations. Um, this is primarily dedicated to serving students who live off campus to ensure that despite all the resources that you've come to enjoy living on campus, that you recognize that those resources don't go away merely because you now might live off campus. There's different ways you can access those services. Um, you can communicate directly through uh, to us and we can um, provide those resources, provide contacts to those resources. Um, but the uh, Knight's Guide to Living Off Campus is a great resource for that, um, where you can also navigate <clears throat> the different processes for choosing where to live, getting some guidance on signing a lease, uh, understanding the dynamics and the rights and responsibilities as a tenant, because they're gonna be a little bit different living off campus than they are living on campus. Uh, maybe some tips to finding a roommate uh, some of you might have that ready to go, no problem. Uh, others might be going, hmm, I might want to try something different or I might be looking for a different experience. Uh, also to maintain an understanding about vigilance and being safe off campus because uh, while we have a very safe environment in and around campus, there are things to always keep track of. And I know uh, Officer Scott will be helping us with that, uh, some information here in a little bit. And also understanding transportation, living on campus, you know, you can pretty much drop out and get somewhere, uh, but understanding the and navigating uh, local transportation in and around uh, different off-campus uh, prospects. So ultimately, Student Neighborhood Relations is here to continue to serve you, make sure that you don't necessarily feel like you don't have connection to those things that you've come to expect, um, maybe enjoy and engage in as a benefit of being a part of this UCF community. There's so many things to continue to enjoy even as an off-campus student. And if you recognize that the vast majority of our UCF Knights do in fact live off campus, um, then uh, and are still successful and, and still engaged and are a big part of this community, uh, then I think a lot uh, a lot more often folks become a little bit less anxious about what that potential looks like. Uh, so we're here to help you do that within the student neighborhood relationships element uh, of our different um, support mechanisms. So 
Um, I didn't want to take up too much more of your time. Uh, I'm going to pass it off to my colleague, uh, Brittany Deegan, who represents what is one of the primary resources in supporting uh, these efforts of identifying uh, your housing, and that's off, off campuspartners.com. Thanks very much. Thank you, Chris. So I am Brittany Deegan with Off Campus Partners. We are fortunate enough to partner with UCF to provide you all with a really great resource to find housing, um, but also roommates and a number of educational resources. So when it comes time to looking to live or move off campus, maybe for the first time, um, this is a really great place to get started and should provide you with kind of a one-stop shop to do so. So you can easily find the website. It's ucf.offcampuspartners.com, or you are welcome to scan that QR code right there, which will take you to the resource. On the next slide here, so you'll see that it's very simple to easily navigate to the resource. On the homepage, you're going to find a number of different uh, materials and information to look through as far as how to get started with your search, um, and then even see some nearby rentals that are available to you as well. Going into the actual housing search, you'll be able to see that um, there's a variety of different ways that you can actually find different options. It's not only going to be limited to apartments, but we're going to have a number of different unit types and building types as far as houses or townhomes, anything that might fit your needs. We understand that those might be different uh, for each one of you. So you can actually search by the campus that you would like to live closest to, um, also a neighborhood that you are um, interested in living in. You'll be able to see a variety of options, sort through sublet listings and even post sublet listings. And then very important, you can also sort by distance to campus. So a number of ways to look and find uh, housing that meets your needs. We also have a roommate finder on our resource. So this is going to be limited to only those with a verified ucf.edu email address. So we do try to keep this private and restricted to only UCF affiliates. It's a completely free resource for you. You would create an account and then start by creating a profile. And then from there, you can find and sort through profiles based on similar interests, um, housing needs from others that might be looking. You can favorite profiles and then connect with one another through the site. So it really puts that decision making in your hand. You can find somebody to live with beforehand um, and before securing that lease um, for the next year ahead. And then we also have a really great uh, section of the site, which is our resources. So this is going to provide you with a number of educational components as far as what to consider when living off campus, when living in the area or different parts of town. Um, there's some really great resources here to check out and a, a really easy way to find. You can just search for resources by inputting, inputting a word in that um, that bar, that search bar at the top. So really a great place to get started, search through all of the different options around campus. Um, and again, to really support you in your efforts and act as a one-stop shop. So thank you. Hello, good afternoon everyone. My name is Destiny and I'm here at the Point at Central. Um, so attending college is one of the best experiences that you will endure during your young adult years. So we understand that finding a place that you can call home is super duper important. Um, that's why we, the Point at Central, offer a multitude of different amenities and services that will allow your student to be able to study, relax, build strength, and have a sense of community. That's something that we personally pride here at the Point at Central. Um, we do offer two bedroom and four bedroom and two bathroom floor plans um, throughout our community. Um, we also only offer one lease term that starts mid-August and will go through July 31st of that following year. 
Um, our apartment features include a fully furnished apartment with all black appliances, high speed internet, um, water included in the rental installments, as well as capped electricity. Um, and we also do have two phases in our property. Um, I'm sorry, we have one phase, but we have a different amount of uh, amenities here at our property that includes two resort style pools, two basketball courts, um, two sand volleyball courts, a fitness center, a business center, all that good things. Um, and then we also do have a resident live program that also does help with creating that sense of community here at our property and giving that customer service that we love to provide for our residents. Um, we also do have engaging events and they also do help with like conflict resolution between like roommates if that were to happen. Um, being UCF affiliated, we do accept Florida prepaid and financial aid here as forms of payment. And we also do have a shuttle system uh, while we are one mile away from campus. So yeah, that's pretty much what I would like to talk about for us being at the point at Central. And next we have Brianna talking about my circle. Hello. Um, I'm Brianna. I'm going to talk about Night Circle. Very similar to the point, we do have a range of amenities. We have three phases, each with its own pool, basketball court, volleyball court, um, as well as tennis courts. We have two gyms, um, a game room, you know, lots of different kinds of things for, you know, just your after curricular hours. Um, we are just across the street. Uh, from campus, so pretty easy. We have a dedicated bus shuttle. Um, we have two bedrooms, three bedrooms, four bedrooms. We are actually 95% sold out for next term. So if you uh, are interested in living at Night Circle, definitely start your application now so that you know you can get in the queue to have your lease generated. However, if we don't get to you, then you can join the wait list. Um, similar to the point, we do have a Res Life program that is managed by um, our Res Life Director and Assistant Res Life Director and a dedicated team of RAs. We accept Florida prepaid and financial aid as well. And yeah, that's Night Circle. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it along to Union West. Hello, um, my name is Caitlin from Union West and I have Paige here with me. We are the managers here. Um, Union West is a downtown property, so we're at the downtown campus for UCF. Um, and luckily this campus has everything. Um, so everything that you need to be a successful student is in this building. Um, kind of a little lower in the um, screen, you'll see we have access to the UCF Rec and Wellness Center here, um, Health and Wellness Center, um, first stop caps, UCFPD is right down the street, addition financial, we got a subway. Um, so there's everything you could possibly need is in this building. Um, we are fully furnished and all inclusive with all of our utilities. So there's no caps, there's no overages, nothing you have to worry about there. Um, we do also accept Florida prepaid and financial aid. Um, so we do a deferment program for that. Um, but, you know, honestly, there's just so much to do here. We also have a resident life program, which is all the events that we host throughout the month. So not only do we have events that are, you know, catered to our residents, so like study nights, we'll have um, we game nights and movie nights and stuff like that. But we also participate with downtown student life um, to collab on events throughout the month. Yeah, a couple things to know. Um, even if you're not a downtown student, you can live here. We do have a direct shuttle to main campus for UCF that runs every single day and then also on game days. Uh, so, and if you are a student who's doing classes at both or one versus the other, you're also, um, it's a good spot to live. And then as far as roommates go, we do have a very um, immersive roommate matching program where you get to fill out a profile and select your roommates on your own. Um, as long as they match the profile and the floor plan that you have. We have four different floor plans. We both have shared rooms and private rooms. And then each floor has like a common area kitchen, common area living room, common area laundry, all of that. So even if you have the opportunity to get to know the people you live with, you also have opportunities all the time to get to know the people on your floor. So it's very much a community in that regard. And we are located downtown, which means you have direct access to everything there. So much to do. Correct. Yeah. Plus there's a brand new park right across the street from us, which is really nice. Um, and that's all there. So yeah. That is it for Union West.
making sure that I'm not on mute. Okay, great. Um, thank you so much to all of our affiliated housing partners. We very much value that partnership that we have with them. Um, and now we are going to pass it on to Rick Cologne, who is a financial aid specialist here at UCF. And thank you for that. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Rick Cologne. I'm one of financial aid specialists here at UCF. And I'm gonna talk to you what financial aid is here at UCF and how can that financial aid be used to assist you with paying any off or on-campus housing, the types of aid that we have available, how much aid can you really receive and when does the disbursement to happen? So how do we apply for financial aid? As many of you already know, you must complete the FAFSA. Every year the FAFSA becomes available. This year the FAFSA has changed for next fall. If you're planning on coming in for next fall or any other university that you're planning on going to, you want to make sure that this December, that's when the new FAFSA will come along. They haven't given us an exact date, but any time between the 1st through the 31st is when it becomes available. It used to be October 1st, but they've changed that now. If you haven't created an account, you go ahead and do so now. You don't have to wait to December to create an account, but go ahead and do that now. So when that December date does come along, you're ready to go, just input the information or transfer the information and then just update your tax information or the household income that you might have on there. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So what types are available that you can use, right? Well, we have what's called gift aid or free money, uh, free money such as federal grants, states grants like the UCF grant or the Florida Student Assistance Grant, institutional grant scholarships, as well as private scholarships. FAFSA can also qualify you or help you obtain self-help aid in the form of student loans, student employment, such as work study that you might be able to obtain from there as well. On each of these slides, you'll do see a couple of uh, um, QR codes, I encourage you to go ahead and scan those, bookmark those pages because it's gonna give you more in-depth information of what all this is about. So I encourage you to go out there, click it, um, save it, bookmark it so that you can reference back to it. If we can move on to the next slide, please. So what is the cost of attendance or how much financial aid can someone receive? Uh, so for a Florida resident, students who are from Florida, your cost of attendance is gonna be roughly 24,000 $254. That includes your tuition and fees, your books, supplies, housing, food, transportation, and personal expenses. All that encompasses your cost of attendance. If you're a non-Florida resident, if you go on to the next slide, you'll see that your cost of attendance is going to be slightly higher than the ones from here. What's the big difference? It's your tuition. Your tuition is going to be about $20,000. $980. But the book supply, housing, food, transportation, personal expenses, more or less is breaking down is exactly the same whether you're on campus, off campus, I'm sorry, not off campus, on in state or out of state. All of that remains the same with the exception of your tuition and fees. Next slide. So the disbursement of all this financial aid happens the week after the drop swap ad has ended or the second week of classes. We gotta make sure there's nothing pending on your to-do list, no items, no holds that's gonna prevent that from dispersing. That second week, we disperse the funds over to student account services. Student account services then applies that towards whatever you owe to the university beginning with your on-campus tuition and fees on campus, your tuition and fees on campus housing and only on campus housing. If you should have financial aid in excess of what you owe the university, student account services then will issue you a refund of that financial aid. It is that refund that you can use to pay for your other cost of attendance, such as off-campus housing, that you can use that. They can do it in direct deposit, which is what we highly encourage because that gets to you a lot quicker, a lot safer, or they can mail you a check to whatever mailing address you have on your My UCF. But because many students move around a lot, they might leave that mailing address of what it was before. They mail the check to that address. You no longer live there. So that's why we encourage students to do the direct deposit. Now, if we move on to the next slide, because disbursement doesn't happen until 
the second week of classes, we have what's called a projected aid request. And if you click onto the other slide, you'll see what this form looks like. And students, I want you, or everyone out there, I want you to be, pay attention, very close attention to the top of this request form. As you can see up there, it says fall 2023. Each term is going to have its own request form. It is this form that's going to help defer or, you know, uh, assist you with that rent that you might owe the beginning of that semester or that month. So if you know that you have anticipated financial aid refund coming to you, but it's not going to happen until after the drop ad period, the second, third week of classes, then you can use this form to request what's called how much aid am I getting and what am I anticipating? anticipating that refund to be and when is going to happen. Take it to your apartment complex, your managers off campus, they'll review it, they'll then get together with you and work out on how they can defer that rent. So definitely students, everyone out there, if you know this is you, the projected financial aid request form is the form that you want to use for off-campus housing and only off-campus housing. And again, I gotta reiterate, I wanna be clear, we do not disperse funds to any off-campus housing. We disperse it back to the student as a refund, and it is the student's responsibility to make sure that they go ahead and follow through with paying that rent on there. Next slide. This is our contact information. Any questions, any concerns, any doubt whatsoever that you might have about financial aid, make sure you reach out to us, contact us. We're here Monday through Friday from nine till five. We have Zoom appointments that you can do. So if it's a little inconvenient for you to come in in person, definitely set up an appointment with us. As you can see there, um, that is the appointment. You can scan the QR code. We are here with the experts at this. Do not ask anybody else about financial aid. Let us look at your account. Make sure you know what you are receiving, when it's receiving. And again, anything, any questions at all about financial aid, we are here for, to help you guys, to help you charge on. Thank you so much and much success to all. Thank you so much, Rick. Really appreciate that. I know that a lot of people have been putting questions in there, so we will answer those at the end during our Q&A section. Um, so unfortunately, our student legal services representative did have something come up, so I will be speaking about student legal services. I do work very closely with this office and have heard them present a lot, so I feel like I'm um, capable of doing it and they gave me some notes. So um, student legal services is a free attorney service to any UCS student. It is incredible that they do this, but for whatever your student may need, um, this Student Legal Services will set up an appointment with them and be their lawyer for free. Um, they will review a lease before you sign. So we know that signing leases can be nerve-wracking, a lot of legal jargon, but Student Legal Services will review that with you before you sign so you can understand exactly what you're signing to. Um, a lease is binding as soon as you sign it. There's no cooling off period. So um, there are very limited ways to get out of those leases once they are signed. Be sure that you're checking the lease for addition uh, fees in addition to rent. So there could be parking fees, relet fees, mandatory cleaning fees. Um, this is very normal for apartments, but we just want you to know what you're signing um, before you sign it. Um, you will most likely need a guarantor as a student, so someone to prove that they can meet the financial criteria of the landlord before signing a lease. As we know, most students are full-time students. They probably don't have a state steady income, so this is where that guarantor comes in. We yeah. do encourage everyone to get renter's insurance, whether you are on campus or off campus. Um, so there's liability insurance through some landlords, but then renter's insurance can protect your actual belongings. So that MacBook, that iPad, anything that happens. But be aware that sometimes floods are a separate policy. So again, you want to be understanding what policy you are signing, and that's where student legal services can come in and help you as well. Be sure that everything is in writing. Document everything. Um, keep a copy of the move-in inspection report, take pictures if there's any damage so that you can show that it was there when you got there and not when you left. Um, and you, uh, Student Legal Services has actually a video on their YouTube currently, it's just UCS Student Legal Services, virtual lunch with your attorney, so pop down, eat some lunch, and they are going over what to know before signing a lease. So um, while you can absolutely make an appointment with them, if you just want a brief overview to prepare, you can absolutely um, watch this video. It's, it's great um, information. They also wanted me to tell you um, that 
There is a trend where leases are being signed online, so just be aware of that. Um, they have seen some situations where a student may visit a complex and ends up signing a lease while at the off office not realizing it was a lease. They think it's an application or to be put on a wait list or something like that, uh, or they were just reserving a space. That doesn't really exist or happen. Um, if you are signing something, it is most likely a lease. So again, before your student signs anything, be sure that they understand what they're signing, make an appointment with Student Legal Services, and they are one of the best resources I think that we have on campus that is gravely underused. So um, I'm glad that we are sh sharing this with you all so that you know that it's here. Um, moving forward, we are going to hand it over to Matthew Scott with UCSPD. Thank you so much. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Once again, I'm Sergeant Matthew Scott with the UCF Police Department, and we're going to talk about the resources that are available for you regarding your fully accredited law enforcement agency. Next slide, please. So some things to note about the UCF Police Department. We are on campus 24 seven. We're here all the time. There are approximately 83 of us and we have mutual aid agreements with all the local agencies that surround us to include the Orange County Sheriff's Office, the Seminole County Sheriff's Office, Orlando Police Department and several others as well. So we cover as much geography as possible to also include main campus, the Rosen, UCF downtown. Uh, those are those locations regarding also Knight Circle and the Point at Central those are the housing complexes that we cover. So we actively patrol all the time. We're always available and we're always around. We also have what we call blue light phones all over our campuses. We're approximately 250 of them where if you don't necessarily have access to a cell phone or you need to contact law enforcement, you just go to a blue light phone that you see, you press the button, you're gonna be instantly in contact with our dispatch. Uh, the UCF Police Department is actually one of two in the state of Florida that actually have our own dispatch, our own communication center. So anytime, anywhere that you are on campus, you contact the UCF Police Department, whether it be the non-emergency number, which is 407-823-5555, or you call 911, you will be redirected or routed to our UCF communication center. So that's wonderful. Um, one of the things to also note is that when you come onto campus, we have a posted speed limit of approximately 30 miles an hour. You do not need to drive any faster than that. So it's very important because we are the second most populated campus in the nation. We have pedestrians walking everywhere. So for that, you need to slow down and pay attention. Speaking of paying attention, it's very important that you pay attention to your property. One of the, the biggest crimes that we have on this campus is unattended theft. Unattended theft, where students are leaving their property, they walk away and they come back and it's gone. So it's important that you register your property. We have connections with a company called Protect DNA. And what, one of the things that they do is they offer a free mobile application, whether it be iOS or Android, that you can download and you can actually electronically basically house all your serial numbers in one place. Or if you're not necessarily interested in that, we highly advise that you write your serial numbers down for your laptop, for your cell phone, for any property that you have that has a serial number, please, it's important that you do that because that's one of the ways that you're actually able to have improved ownership of your property. Heaven forbid, should you have anything stolen or lost and you come to us as far as looking for a police report, that's going to be one of the things that we ask you, hey, do you have a serial number for your property? So it's very important that you look into that as well. One of the recommendations that we also make regarding property is that, please, if you have your vehicles and you're parking on campus, do not leave anything inside of your vehicle. Take all items out, your laptops, whatever the case may be, your book bags. I would even, even caution you, if you have cell phone chargers that are sticking out, do not have them basically in plain view. You want to make sure that you take either all that stuff out or you put it in your center console or in your glove box, you hide that stuff. So it's important that anyone that's kind of looking around, trying to maybe potentially victimize anybody, we don't want that happening. Now, that said, UCF is a very safe campus, like what was said earlier. We do our best to make sure it's a safe environment, but please, we need your help in helping us do that. So see something, say something. If you notice that there's some activity or you're, you're looking around, something doesn't look right, we highly encourage you to contact the UCF Police Department. It's very important that you do that because once again, we wanna help keep you safe. Safety is our top priority. So once again, that non-emergency number, that 407-823-5555, please contact that. And then you can also get more information as far as self-defense. We have a fantastic program in Mighty Knights. Uh, you can go to the UCF Police Department, which is police.ucf.edu, 
and you can sign up to learn some really cool self-defense techniques. And we talk about mindset, preparedness, and awareness. One of the things to also remember is that if you're ever on campus, you feel unsafe, you're, you're not comfortable walking to you from the interior of the campus, from a building to the parking lot, we offer escort services as well. So all you have to do is contact that non-emergency number, and then we will be more than happy for an officer to either walk you or drive you should there be inclement weather to your location. Thank you so much. Welcome, Knights. Charge on. Thank you so much, Matthew. And finally, we are going to toss it over to Meredith Barner with our UCF on-campus housing. All right, thank you so much. And thanks everyone for joining us this afternoon. Um, I'm here to talk with you about the lottery process. Um, as most folks know, um, we don't have enough space on campus for everyone who would like to give on campus. So we do prioritize our incoming freshmen every year um, so that each new class of students that come in has the most opportunity to live on campus. That does mean that we have limited space for sophomores, juniors, seniors, folks who would like to return to campus. Um, so we do do a lottery process to help randomize that and make it a little bit more fair. Um, first thing to note is that the Rosen campus or the Rosen College Apartments are not part of the lottery process. The Rosen Apartments are first come first serve in terms of applications. Um, that is on the Rosen College of Hospitality Management campus. It's a beautiful facility there, beautiful community, uh, and it is a great option for our hospitality majors or perhaps those who want to live near the hospitality industry area like Disney, Universal, SeaWorld, and that type of thing. Um, the lottery process, though, that is for our academic year agreements, um, which would place students in the Her uh, Hercules apartments in our annual agreement in the towers. So fall 2024, spring 2025, summer 2025, um, or our annual agreement at Northview, again, fall 24, spring 25 summer 25. Um, and so that lottery process will open on January 10th. There is a lottery window from January 10th to January 26th. You just need to get your application in at any point during that window. It is okay if you don't get it in on the very first day at the very first moment because it is a randomized lottery. Um, so similar to when you buy a lottery ticket, it doesn't matter if you buy it when the Powerball opens or when it right before it closes, you have the same um, opportunity. So um, we do a random selection, but we do prioritize some folks within that. So um, our National Merit Scholars or Benequisto Scholarship recipients are um, guaranteed four years of housing on campus. And so if they do apply through the lottery, they are um, confirmed for a space. And then Florida prepaid dormitory account holders who have at least one credit left are able to be confirmed as long as they apply during the lottery. Um, and then secondarily, we do try to prioritize our rising sophomores, um, but there is typically not enough space for all the rising sophomores who do apply. And so just to be clear, when I'm saying sophomores, I'm not necessarily referring to by credit hour, just second year students. So the current freshmen that are on campus this year or current first year students wanting to return next year, we would prioritize that group. Um, so students who do apply during the lottery between January 10th and January 26th will be notified on February 2nd if they received a space or not. So if they do receive a space, their application will be confirmed. And that means that later on, they will be able to participate in room selection. So room selection will take place later on during the spring semester. Those folks that are confirmed do have a deadline by which they can decline that lottery offer and get their money back. So sometimes we will see that perhaps a group of students goes into the lottery together and they want to all live together on campus next year, um, but maybe everyone from the group doesn't get confirmed and they may choose to then go off campus. They can then get their, um, their prepayment back and go ahead and, and move off campus and do that, that, um, that with their group. Um, so, uh, that is for those folks who are confirmed. They then participate in room selection later on. Um, the waitlisted uh, status is essentially um, for those folks that we are not able to house, we will let them know that they are waitlisted. We will ask them to verify that they wish to remain on the waitlist or ask them whether they would like to cancel and receive their money back. You can remain on the waitlist throughout the rest of the spring semester, summer semester, and through fall opening of 2024. Um, as long as you're on the waitlist, you can cancel at any time and get your prepayment back. We will occasionally ask those folks on our waitlist to go through and verify that they want to remain on the waitlist so that we know that we're maintaining that list um, kind of in a filtered status to make sure that we are looking for space that uh, for folks who need it. Additional waitlist offers are made as cancellations come in from those folks who were confirmed during the first round of the lottery. So we have a limited amount of space and we essentially continue to refill it as we get cancellations. So it's difficult to say we will be able to let you know by a certain date if you get a space or not. So normally what I would recommend to folks who are on the fence or who don't know if they want to remain on our wait list after the lottery or not is that as a personal decision, you wanna look off campus, make sure that you've got those options. And then it's kind of 
um, up to each individual student in each family as to what their situation is, um, as to how they might decide to, um, to wait or not. Um, but there are a lot of great off-campus options, as you've heard from today, and then also additional ones that you can find um, on the off-campus partners website. So there are, is a lot of student uh, housing in the area that's definitely available for folks. And I think that is everything I have. So thank you. Okay, thank you again to all of our presenters. And this wraps up our presentation portion. We would now like to answer some of the questions that have been put in the chat. Um, if you do have any additional questions, please type them in the comment section and we will do our best to get to each one. So we will go ahead and start. Um, so first we have the question, um, and this can be for some of our affiliates maybe, um, is, there, is there any off-campus housing that offers an academic year contract, or if a student cannot afford summer housing, is the lottery the only option? So do they have shorter leases than 12 months, potentially? I can go ahead and uh, kind of tackle that one. For Point and for Night Circle, well, I don't want to speak for Point exactly, but we don't offer a short-term lease. Mm -hmm. However, we do offer an affordable kind of relet option. So basically you would sign for the entire contract and then um, you would pay a fee. Currently that's $350. Find someone to take over your lease for May and then May through June, July, as long as that person has moved in beginning on the first of the month or if you have an arrangement, uh, then you wouldn't be responsible for the remainder of the contract. It is a complete release. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of relets that happen in May. Yeah, and I can speak for um, Union West. We have we do not have the academic contract, but we do have a contract that ends in December for those that are graduating in December for a short fee. And then uh, similar to Knight Circle and Point, we have the same relight process and relight fee of $350. And we can help work with you on that to find someone if you do need an academic one. Uh, I will say that we have found that a lot of students do take summer classes just due to what is needed for UCF. And Brittany, do you have um, any insight? Is there some sorting features on offcampuspartners.com for release um, links? Yes, there is. So if you go on to the main housing page, you're going to see a more filter, which acts as our advanced search, and it actually allows you to select the length of lease that you desire. So if you wanted something short term, by semester, month to month even, um, you'll be able to filter through options that offer that. And then we will have, as I mentioned before, a number of UCF students that will post sublet listings, which oftentimes do offer for or offer a shorter term um, lease. So there should be a, a variety of options for you to kind of thumb through and inventory will be evolving as well. So if you didn't see something today, um, check back, you know, tomorrow, a week from now, a month from now or so, because you will see um, options fluctuate. Great. I'm going to stick with the um, affiliates for a second. So we have a few questions that are regarding um, the capacity of um, your properties right now, if each one of you could just sort of go on, we can start with Union West. So for um, the fall, we have a good amount, a good amount of availability left. We do anticipate um, by January being full on at least two of our floor plans, um, but also current availability. If anyone's looking for right now, we do have a couple um, options for right now, and then we'll have um, some extra options opening up in January for the spring term. Okay, Stephanie. Yes, so for the point, we are completely sold out for the fall of 2024, as well as right now, we don't have any availability for current movements. However, we just opened our wait list today and we're sending out emails to people who may have either already started an application as well um, as people who may have completed an application. So you'll be able to join that wait list. Um, it's kind of hard for me to distinguish, you know, of course, like where you would be at on the wait list due to the fact that that, you know, there are a multitude of different floor plans that we do offer. So, um, you know, you'll be able to kind of contact us. We can give you more information. And then, Brianna, you said that you're 95 percent full at this time. Yeah, so we're 95 percent full. Our two by twos are completely sold out and we have started the wait list for that. Uh, the wait list is not too extensive for that just yet, but um, I do anticipate we'll probably be filling up by the end of the <coughs> Absolutely. Um, and then I do want to reiterate, while we love our affiliated partners um, and they 
definitely have an easier process for taking financial aid or Bright Futures or anything like that. As Rick discussed, that is an option for all off-campus. You just have to go through a couple more steps to make it happen. Um, so that's why we have our Office of Financial Aid here because um, if you know this isn't an option at this time, you can look at other properties and um, you know figure out a way to make what you have work for you. It just might be in a different way than you were anticipating. Um, and as Brit Brittany mentioned, the off-campus partners website is um, real-time updated. So like she said, there might not be something one day, there could be something the next. I know that I've been um, searching online and I've seen 10 to 15 sublets posted because students are realizing that they're graduating in about a month and we all know college students and we love them, but they don't necessarily think ahead. So there are even things opening up right now for the spring. So um, we really encourage you to utilize that off-campus partners website to really filter down and find the appropriate um, property that's right for you. Um, each student is different and each student has different needs and wants. Um, okay, moving on. Um, Rick, this is a question for you. Can we use our educational fund to pay for off-campus housing? Absolutely. Any financial aid that you have, and as I said earlier in the presentation, that is above and beyond what you owe the university can be used. So whether that's float or prepaid, bright futures, any of that loans, grants, scholarships can be used for all of that. But as you mentioned, it's going to get to the student a little later, and that's where the projected aid request form will come into assistance to help students defer the rent, depending on the off-campus housing, which most, if not all, of the affiliated housings um, do accept this form. But definitely, students, I encourage you to meet with the office management so that if they do accept this form, make sure that you know what term, what term it's for and that you're selecting the right term for that. It's only a one-time kind of deal. And by that, I mean that students, because they know they're receiving financial aid next semester, you know, in the spring, they start to submit the request today so that they can get it to them January 1st. And it doesn't work that way. That's why I showed that little red spot on the top. It's going to say fall, spring, or summer. If it says fall and you're doing it for spring, it's not going to work. But yes, any financial aid that's above and beyond what you owe the university can be used for off-campus housing. Great. Um, Meredith and Rick, this is kind of for both of you. So this person is a second year Towers resident looking to move to Northview Complex for the start of junior year in fall 2024. Can my Florida Bright teachers and or financial aid be used for housing payments at the Northview Complex? And if so, do I need to apply in for the housing lottery that opens sometime in January? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, yes, you would need to apply through the lottery um, in order to have a chance at having a space in uh, Northview for next year. Um, so you would want to do that once that window opens on January 10th, but anytime before um, between January 10th and January 26th. Um, and then if you do get a space and do room selection, um, you would be billed for Northview via your student um, account, the same as you would for towers. So it works exactly the same. Um, and so I, I'll turn it over to Rick, of course, to address the Bright Futures question. If Bright Futures is the only financial aid that you're receiving, then as I said before, it's gonna go towards your tuition and fees and you may not have enough left over. But if you have, again, financial aid in excess of what you owe, absolutely. You can use those funds that, again, they'll be returned to you as a refund. Um, and you can use that to apply for on campus, off campus, Northview, um, downtown, whichever. So the, 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 I guess the gist of it is if I have financial aid above and uh, what I owe the university, the answer would be yes, you can use those funds for that. It's all part of your cost of attendance. Awesome. One more question for you, Rick. Do Parent PLUS loans cover off-campus housing? I don't like to say cover on financial aid, any, anything of that. It can assist as well. The difference with the Parent PLUS loan is if, be, if it is above and beyond what it is owed to the university, the student is not going to receive it as a refund, but the parent will be. The parent will be issued a check. It'll be mailed to that parent. However long the mail takes is how it's going to take. So we advise parents that if they're going to apply, 
of the parent plus loan do not apply no earlier than 60 days before the beginning of each semester. Um, so that way your credit can last a little longer. And when the financial aid finally kicks in, all the paperwork and all that is done, the refund can get issued to you, but it's issued through student accounts and it's issued through paper, which is going to be mailed. So it might take a little bit longer for that check to get to you, but it will not be issued to the student, only to the parent if it's a refund. Fantastic, thank you, Rick. Um, I'm sure you all noticed that there is a new person on our screen. We are joined by Gordon Adams. Um, Dr. Chris McDonald did have to jump off of the live stream, so we have Gordon Adams here who also works with the neighborhood relations. So Gordon, um, what is the timeline for securing off campus housing? If things are already sold out, it seems we are behind the curve. Can you elaborate on this, please? Absolutely. So if we see that there are some places that are filling faster than others, uh, just know that most of the off-campus uh, housing locations don't see themselves filling up until about early spring. So, and by early, I'm talking about like real spring after the groundhog sees a shadow or doesn't. Myth or legend? Nonetheless, so somewhere around March, I'm, I'm thinking things really need to be solidified. And I think that's one of the reasons why through the UCF housing, we know the lottery results come out in at the beginning of February and then allows everyone who may have applied to start figuring out, well, if I got the lottery or didn't, now I really need to solidify where I'm going to be living. So I know that as we've seen in uh, in some of the comments and from and from of the statements from those from our affiliate partners, they're seeing a little bit of heavier traffic right now. But as you end up checking with some of those other properties, especially working with um, off-campus uh, partners and Brittany's office, you'll see that there's still availability uh, and there is some flexibility with regards to the, um, the additional terms, not everything being 12 months as well. So don't panic, make some calls, do your research. And that's the reason why we're having this conversation now is because now's the time to develop your plan A, your plan B and your plan C. Thank you, Gordon. Um, sorry, I'm trying to go through. There's a lot of great questions. Um, so once again, there's a question about bright futures. Um, Rick, you kind of already covered this. We don't like to use the word cover for anything. Um, it all just depends on what your student owes to the university and what they have left over. Um, I think that's an excellent opportunity to contact the financial aid office because each student is unique and could have different aids and funding. So um, if you have a specific question about your student's account, I think that's an excellent opportunity to contact the financial aid office directly. Rick, do you want to add anything to that? No, you hit it on the button. And the, the coolest thing we have now this year is um, um, students can or parents can actually zoom in. Um, they don't have to leave. We got parents from all over the country, all over the world that can actually zoom in um, and stay right at home and meet with one of our financial aid specialists. So any questions, any concerns, like you said, definitely meet with us. We're the experts. We'll get you the right answer. Thank you. Now, if a parent wants to know about their student's account, do they need to fill out the FERPA forms or is this public information well, because of their student? No, not necessarily. Great question. And I was about to lead to that and I just, Oops, but <laughs> yeah, it's called the um, record release authorization. The student, only the student has access to that information. So if a student calls us on a phone, we're limited to the information we can share. If they send us an email, we're limited to the information we can share. If it's anybody else, then yeah, it's locked down. As a parent, we do have um, students to give them the opportunity to go onto their My UCF. It's a student portal they can access what's called the record release authorization and add the third party that they wish to add on to there. They give that person a code. When that person meets with us on Zoom or calls us, we'll ask for that passcode. If everything matches up, whatever that student told us that we can disclose, we'll share with that person on there. So it's highly important that the parents, guests, you know, um, do have that line of communication open with their sons and daughters and um, to make sure that they do that record release to authorization, especially that first year. Um, as a freshman, there's a lot of thing that falls through the cracks. Parents wait in line for such a long time only to be told that I can only give you so much and it can be very frustrating. So yes, whenever you're gonna meet with us, make sure that record release authorization is set 
And if any questions about that, registrar's office manages those, so they'll be able to help you out with that as well. Excellent, thank you. Um, Meredith, question for you. Can students apply for Rosen and still apply for lottery on main campus? Yeah, um, so good question. Uh, no, you need to pick one or the other, you need to, or one out of the four. So Rosen or lottery for academic, lottery for towers or lottery for Northview. Um, we need to be able to narrow down what students are interested in to know to whom we can offer housing. Perfect, and the Rosen application opens when? The Rosen application will open on January 10th for returners, just the same as the lottery, just so that it's all the same date. Um, but that is again, first come first serve. Perfect. Rick, coming back to you, a lot of questions about finances. <laughs> if a student has a Florida prepaid form, form plan credit and the plan is on hold, does it need to be off the hold status before submitting the lottery application or Meredith, this might be you? That might be more me, because I think they mean Florida prepaid dorm plan. Um, yes. So we need to be able to see on our end that the student has a credit remaining. Um, that information comes down into our system from uh, Tallahassee. So I would say maybe email us to see if we can see in our system how many credits we're showing you remaining, um, and then we could um, check into that for you. I don't know the meaning of a hold status in terms of the Florida prepaid dorm inner workings, and so I don't want to tell you the wrong answer. Um, so definitely check us. Uh, send us an email and um, see if we can check that for you, include your student's name, UCF ID number, and that you wanna check and see if we are, we are seeing that they have Florida prepaid dorm credits remaining. Um, it doesn't need to be before they submit the lottery application, but we do need to know that before we do that confirmation. So before that January 26 closure date, we would need to know that they have credits remaining in order to prioritize them in the lottery. Perfect. I'm assuming this is a financial question. Can 529 be used for some of the off-campus housing? Yeah, 529, um, along with Florida Prepaid as well, is the experts on this is Student Account Services. Their phone number is 407-823-2423 and option number four. They're experts on that. But yes, um, 529, Florida Prepaid, all of that, as long as it's in excess, anything in excess uh, can be used for any other cost of, it, cost of, ten, cost of attendance. I just had lunch. Ooh, a little pasta sleepy there. <laughs> so. um, Brittany, I'm going to go to you. Um, this person said, I noticed three communities mentioned in the video. Are these the only three affiliated with UCF? My child chooses not to have a roommate. Are there one bedroom floor plans available? So I'll answer the first part of that question. These are our only three affiliated properties. Um, what that basically means is what I said earlier, the process of using those additional funds like financial aid, Florida Prepaid or Bright Futures is just very smooth, but that's truly it. Um, and they're great properties, but we also have a lot of other options around and that's where UCF off campus partners comes in. Um, so affiliated makes it seem like we somehow manage the property, but we do not. That's why we have these lovely partners here to tell us about their properties because they are the ones that are there and managing it. Um, UCF, we just are affiliated with them, but Brittany, can you speak a little bit about finding other properties and also one bedroom floor plan? Sure. So the affiliated properties are also going to be listed on the off-campus housing website. But in addition to that, you can filter through the hundreds of options that are listed today um, by the unit type. So if you wanted to find a one bedroom, um, then you could actually filter that based on the unit type. And then if there's a specific price range that you have in mind, you can actually apply that within the filtered search as well. So getting very specific as far as what is convenient for you. Um, now, again, if your student is open to living with somebody, but maybe they don't have somebody in mind, they can, of course, lean on the roommate finder through the platform. Um, but there are many communities where you can rent one bedroom within a two bedroom or three bedroom or a four bedroom space, um, which does help with the cost of living off campus. Thank you. Um, Meredith, we have a question. Does the student have a better chance in the lottery with choosing Northview or Towers over academic? Yeah, that's a good question. And it really kind of depends on how many students um, apply each year. Um, so what I can tell you is that in the past, um, there was overall about a 37% um, chance for a student to receive a space. And we were able to 
um, confirm about 37% of the folks who applied. Now, if more people apply this coming year, then that means we'll be able to confirm a smaller percentage. If fewer people apply, the percentage will go up. Um, but in general, there are a little bit more spaces in Northview and Towers than in academic in the Hercules apartments for the lottery. Perfect. And there was also the question of, for sophomores, is summer also part of the lottery for summer 2024? Good question. We didn't really talk about summer 2024. That is not part of the lottery. Our summer applications will open in mid-February as um, folks um, figure out if they're going to be taking classes for the summer. Um, and that is just based on availability. It's um, We typically have some space in the tower, some space in Northview, um, and then some space in the Hercules apartments. Awesome. Oh, and um, at Rosen. Sorry, I should have mentioned that. Rosen. <laughs> Um, this is a question for, um, I'll hand it to Night Circle since it says it, but for Florida prepaid storm, is there a priority for places like Night Circle? I'm sorry, I don't think I understand the question. <laughs> Someone has Florida prepaid dormitory, are they put at the top of the list? For living at Night Circle? No, so um, we do our list basically kind of first come, first serve. So it doesn't matter if they have financial aid, Florida prepay, or how they qualify. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, we have time for about one more question. Um, I know that there are a lot about on campus um, because this was generated for returning residents and your options, we did focus mainly on the lottery. Um, all of our communities on campus are a part of the lottery. So as Meredith mentioned, you can choose academic, Northview or Towers, um, and that's what you can put your name in the lottery for. So I had a few questions like, is Lake Claire part of the lottery? Yes, every community that we have on campus is part of the lottery. Um, Meredith, oh, I'm are, sorry, Holly, can I interrupt you real quick? Um, just to just to correct that just a little bit. Um, so the lottery for academic is going to give you, if you are confirmed there, that goes into the Hercules apartments. Um, we have an extremely limited number of spaces for the lottery folks in Lake Claire, and those are going to be RA roommate spaces. But otherwise, everything else in the academic agreement, Apollo, Libra, um, Hercules and Nike uh, and Lake Claire are pretty much all incoming freshmen for the next year. Thank you, Meredith. I should have just kept it to the experts. Um, I'm going to find one more question for us. Um, oh, we can talk about honors students, Meredith. Um, are Burnett Honors College admitted freshmen, freshmen as honors housing guaranteed? Sure. So it feels like there's a couple questions in there, and I know we've had some questions in the chat about freshmen, incoming freshmen for next year. Um, and so I'll just go ahead and put a plug out there that um, the first to know process is open in our housing portal for folks who are admitted for summer or fall next year as incoming freshmen. You can place your name on the first to know list. Um, and we actually will be sending out the notification to that group later today. Um, so you do want to get your name on that list to be notified of the time and date that the housing application for incoming freshmen will launch later this week. Um, and so in terms of freshmen who are admitted to the Burnett Honors College, you are able to, if you would like, apply for the towers and then be able to select in the room in the towers later on. Um, but it is not a guaranteed space. So um, you still want to apply as a freshman um, prior to us filling, um, which depending on the year could take place, you know, anytime in the spring semester. Um, if the question is maybe more related to current Burnett Honors College, um, residents, um, that, that is not a specific priority within the lottery process. Awesome. Okay, we have reached our time. Um, so that wraps up our live stream. If we were not able to answer your question, we will be continuing to answer questions that were put in the comments um, through our Facebook or YouTube channel. So be on the lookout for a response to your comment. Um, remember, we have recorded the session and it will be available on our YouTube to go back and watch if you need it. Thank you all so much for joining. And as always, our office and all of these offices are here to answer any questions that you may have following today. Remember to follow our, um, our social medias, which are at UCF Housing and all of our departments here today for important um, updates and information throughout the entire year. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and go night.